Hey, what's up guys? It's Justin from Hip Science, and today we're going to be talking about moisture wicking materials. But first, in order to understand what moisture wicking is, you have to understand what capillary action is. So capillary action is actually built into the definition of moisture wicking because wick means to absorb liquid by capillary action. So a lot of people, when they hear the term moisture wicking, or I know at least me, when I first heard moisture wicking, I thought that it meant water repelling, basically. Like, to wick moisture would be to like swish moisture away or to wipe it away. But again, wick means to use capillary action to draw moisture. And the way you can remember this is that a wick, like the noun, a candle wick, uses capillary action to draw melted wax, liquid wax, up the wick to sustain the flame. But what exactly is capillary action? A good example of capillary action in nature is the way that water and nutrients travel up the roots of, for instance, a tree, or in this case, a stalk of celery. So what we have here is a stalk of celery in a glass of water with blue food coloring. Very scientific, I know. As you can see, the leaves are beginning to turn blue, and what that indicates is that the water has traveled all the way up the celery via capillary action until it reached the leaves. Once it gets to the leaves, the water evaporates, and that continues to drive the process of capillary action that pulls the water up through the veins, or xylem, of the celery. And as you can see here, at this cross-section of the celery, the ends of the xylem are blue, these little blue dots, which proves that the water traveled all the way up the celery via capillary action through the xylem. So that's an example of capillary action in nature. But capillary action is also something that we take advantage of frequently in the laboratory, especially with these little guys, which are called capillary tubes. So capillary tubes are used, for instance, in an organic chemistry laboratory to transfer small amounts of liquid. And the way they work is through a combination of cohesive forces and adhesive forces. So adhesive forces is when one thing is attracted to another, and a capillary tube is hydrophilic. So hydro means water, philic means loving. So hydrophilic is the opposite of hydrophobic, which means water repelling, such as a freshly waxed car, which water falls off of. So because capillary tubes are hydrophilic, water adheres to the inside of them, and because the column is so narrow, the rest of the water molecules are attracted to each other, that's the cohesive part, co means like or together, and they travel up the tube together through capillary action, just like the xylem of the celery, as you can see here. So now that you understand what capillary action is and what the difference is between hydrophilic and hydrophobic, we can start talking about what exactly is moisture wicking and how it's an example of a science-based technology that's inspired by a natural phenomenon. So the way moisture wicking technology works is that it draws sweat away from your body, pulling it to the outer surface of a material where it can evaporate more quickly. A non-moisture wicking fabric, like cotton for instance, gets wet and stays wet. The way that a moisture wicking shirt is able to pull the water or the sweat to the outer surface is by being made of an alternating set of fibers, some of which are hydrophilic and some of which are hydrophobic. So the hydrophobic fibers are water repellent, but the hydrophilic fibers act as capillary tubes, essentially, where the water can travel from the inside to the outside. But how come the water doesn't travel back to the inner surface? How is it that these hydrophilic fibers go only in one direction? Well, the answer is simply the same as the reason that the water travels up the roots of the trees or up the xylem of the celery. It's driven by the evaporation at the leaves, or in the case of a shirt, the evaporation on the outer surface to the atmosphere. So as you can see, the inside of the shirt appears slightly more porous and absorbent than the outside of the shirt, which helps to channel the sweat to the outer surface, while still maintaining, and intentionally so, a slightly hydrophobic, water-repellent outer surface. So this can be helpful during physical activity, especially outdoors, again proving the benefit of moisture wicking materials over cotton. Moisture wicking technology is actually pretty cool, and moisture wicking clothes look pretty cool too, right? But I'm not quite sure I've done the explanation justice. Let me see if I can break it down a different way for you. So listen up and let me tell you real quick exactly what it means for a fabric to moisture wick water sticks to a surface if it's hydrophilic. So if you're sweaty, get ready for a wet shirt quick. If it's fibers or cotton, primarily when it gets wet, then it won't dry easily. 
Technology can stop all that from happening with a phenomenon called capillary action. The same thing that pulls water up the roots of a tree is how moisture wicking pulls sweat from you and me. From nature to the lab to everyday life, the elegance of science will make you stop and think twice. See from the ground to the leaves, water travels up trees driven by evaporation and we know this. Inspired by that fact, moisture wicking jackets act through a mix of hydrophil and hydrophobic. Fibers which alternate and the result is to create capillary like paths for sweat to flow. From inner surfaces to outer where evaporation's faster so you can dry and be good to go. I'm here to tell you that science can be inspired by nature. So sit back and let that fact expand your brain, kid. How many cats you know with a science show where they be rapping and explaining. All right, thanks for tuning in. It's always a pleasure. And don't forget to check out the Hip Science Facebook page and Twitter for the fact of the week. And until next time, Hip Science community, Justin from Hip Science, peace. <laughs>